Today I'm going to be making an interactive illustration and by interactive illustration I mean that you're going to be able to interact with this illustration by some means. Picture a spot book. You know that little yellow dog that runs around and has adventures and plays with toys? Yeah, like that. But not only am I going to have an interactive illustration where you lift up a flap and it reveals another illustration underneath, I'm also going to make it so you can interact with that illustration as well. So there's going to be different levels of interaction. I'm going to go and get designing and see if I can pull this off. This illustration took me a little bit to plan but most of it was completely winging it. I went into this not doing a trial run first. I didn't do anything like that. I just got straight into it. I just marked out the coffin. The best way that I thought I could actually mark out a coffin. And I had actually done this with the last illustration I did with a coffin where I just basically did a whole heap of measurements onto the paper. So I got everything symmetrical and went from there. And that's exactly what I did this time around as well. So I used my Mop Marty paper because I didn't really care about that paper if I was cutting it up and wasting it a little tiny bit, which I didn't waste, I didn't waste any of it really. Um, but if it was going to be a complete disaster and I wasted it that way, I didn't really care <laughs> because this paper is not the best. I actually can't wait to use it up. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to get rid of it, to be honest with you. So this illustration took me four days to complete. And it's not like whole, like the whole time, like the whole four days. But this illustration took me probably, I think I did about three hours a day maybe two to three hours a day for four days and yeah I've got so much footage like I've got hours and hours of footage so yeah it would have it probably would have taken me all up probably 12 hours to complete this so yeah it was quite labor intensive but it was I personally believe that it was well worth it and I had so much fun designing this and I'm definitely going to do more of these in the future so with the design on the top of the coffin because this first part is the top of the coffin and i did a fancy pattern down the side and thought oh shit i need to replicate that on the other side symmetrical as much as possible so i got my tracing paper and i copied the design onto it and then just flipped it and then colored in the back with a graphite pencil and then just traced it on that way that's basically what i did just to get that symmetry because i really really did not want to freehand the other side on would have been a bad mistake <laughs> because i i am not good at replicating the same thing on one side reversed on the other side so thank god for tracing paper Now I didn't go very original with the top of the coffin's symbol, I went with a skull, yes I know, but I wanted to do a skull, I had to do a skull. There was a few other ideas that ran through my head, but I don't know, I just, I didn't want to do anything else other than a skull. And I decided at the last minute to add gemstones to the eyes i wasn't going to initially but when i thought about it i thought i didn't want to color in those eyes completely black i, I wanted to put something in them and when you find out the theme the color theme of this illustration i wanted to tie in a color that ties in with the inside of the coffin 
and I'll get to that soon because I'll show you the color palette that I'm going to be using inside the coffin. So I did the little tiny gemstones and I colored them in with a wonderful purple palette from Violet Connie Art and it is called the purple palette. <laughs> and I did some swatches of these purple of this purple palette and oh my god the purples are absolutely beautiful they were absolutely gorgeous colors like I said I'll get to them in a minute I'm yeah I'm, I'm getting up to that but I wanted to add like a metallic sort of element to this piece so I decided to get out a chrome pen that I got in one of the scroller boxes that I've been wanting to use again. It doesn't give the same effect on paper that absorbs. It doesn't give that chrome look, but I still want to use it anyway because I really did like the coverage that he gives better than the Sharpies and the other water-based metallic pens that I do have. It was really, really good. It was, and, and, and this is the key to it all this is this is this is the best part of it all i could draw over the top of it <laughs> with a fine liner so that was cool watercolor doesn't go over it but the fine liners do so that's the other reason why i used it whereas i have a bit of a tough time with the other the other ones so naturally i did a wood colored box and i actually um forgot to film me doing the wood grain on this piece i don't know what happened to the footage i think i forgot to film it i'm hoping i didn't delete it but i'm pretty sure i forgot to press record because there was a section i forgot to press record on in this video <laughs> and i think that was it because all the rest of it sort of makes sense so yeah so i get out connie's purple palette now and like i said before I swatched these purples and they did not disappoint. I was very excited about the metallic violet color. That was the biggest thing I really, really wanted to use was that one. They're just so lovely. They're so pigmented and when they dry i show you the metallic purple when it dries and ooh, it's beautiful it is really really nice so next to do to the top of the coffins the coffins lid i went in and did the shading and i tried to do the shading so it gave a bit of a 3d a look 3d effect from when you look at it i think it does a little bit uh but yeah it's not as it's not as 3d as i thought it was going to be which sort of sucks but oh well <laughs> but it's it's honestly i am still very very happy with the lid i very very I am very very happy with the lid that's basically all I can say I did have a few touch and go moments with the lid but um, yeah I, I I am very happy that I made it plain like it's it's not plain plain but I made it plain enough that it doesn't sort of take too much away from the inside of the piece and I just wanted those eyes to be that sparkly metallic purple to just tie in with with the color theme that's what's going to be inside so uh yeah it's like an amethyst i've made like an amethyst gemstone in those eyes and i really was really frightened about the white gel pen in this piece so i really just i just took it carefully because i really wanted to take my time with this illustration because i had never done one of these before i took my time with it and i didn't want to stuff up and this is the first time in an illustration I've used a cutting knife. I did not want to use any scissors. I didn't want any of those hideous cut marks in the paper. I used a cutting knife, a very sharp one, because I've actually got a whole kit. And it cut perfectly. I didn't have any 
dramas whatsoever. It was so clean. So I'm definitely going to be doing that in the future <laughs> with this sort of illustrations. I, like I said, I do want to do more of these illustrations where you, you interact with it. And it's just, it was so fun. And yeah, I would, I would honestly like to create a whole book of just creepy things that you just lift a flap and it reveals something just absolutely terrifying <laughs> inside. The lid under part, which is what I'm doing now, I'm not a fan. <laughs> this is the part that I feel a little bit disappointed in was trying to get this particular part of the illustration right. And I don't think I executed it the best as, like as I thought I was going to execute it and I could have done a lot better job but it's it's not if it was the main piece like if it was the actual other part like where the the person is laying inside the coffin I would have I would have thrown it away and I would have done I would have done something completely different and um yeah but it wasn't it wasn't the main section of it so I was I was letting that slide and I let it pass for that reason but the back of the Mott Marty paper is which is where I'm painting right now is, is a different texture to the top and it was rubbish like I am happy it worked in my favor because it went all speckly and it went all shit as you can see it really did work in my favor so I can't complain much there but if I was doing a flawless wash or a flawless piece yeah I, I would not have been happy but yeah it's it's just obviously you don't do anything on the backs it's like a totally different texture so I assume that it's not meant to be painted on in in that it's just the backs just different so I really tried to sort of save this piece and I did the best that I could but the the whole aim of it and I think I sort of captured it a little bit was the really old look that I wanted I wanted a really disgusting old look and I even put a little bit of like some stains in there to say that you know it's gross it's you know this person has been rotting in this coffin for a little bit and um yeah i then got some glue and i stuck it down onto another montmarty watercolor piece i then waited for that to dry i actually um i left it to dry overnight i put it in between a book to sort of flatten it because it was starting to bow a bit so i stuck it into a book and i was i flattened the whole piece down so it didn't look warped anymore so I'm just going in now, I'm trying to fix that lid because that lid is a complete monstrosity. But that's when I just went, you know, that's that's basically it. I can't do any more on that lid. It's a monstrosity. <laughs> so I just left it at that. And yeah, like I said, those buttons I could have done, I could have executed them a lot better, but I didn't. Now this is the main piece. This took me a little bit to sketch up one night. I um, just decided to to work out what I was going to put in the coffin and I decided to put a girl in the coffin. And uh, I don't draw a huge amount of people so um, yeah I was definitely going to go with a person. And the hands I personally love the hands. I really do love the hands. The one on the left, not so much at the moment, but I do change it when I do transfer the tracing paper. I, uh, yeah, so I, I do the outline first in uh, a, a multi, in, in a liner, and then I then just scribble on the back with a graphite pencil and then just trace it in there, and that's that's how I do everything <laughs> if you watch my stuff you'll know what I do so yeah I I just traced around her get put the general idea in there and and made sure she lined up that was that was the a major thing I I needed to make sure she lined up because if she didn't that would look really silly <laughs> so 
I'm really happy with with her I really really am happy with her and after changing the hands and like I said my favorite piece about her is the hands I absolutely love how I've done hands because I'm not really good with with human body parts up the feet are a bit questionable as well but yeah I it's I'm still learning anatomy and I am having a look at a few anatomy, anatomy books to try and you know get better with human anatomy because I tend to just draw a lot of monsters and a lot of things like that and uh, I tend to neglect basically what I am supposed to be learning which is the human anatomy <laughs> which is key which is which I, I feel is a key thing that you got to do when you're an artist like you really need to learn that now I made her as gaunt and as skinny as possible because this woman has been in this coffin for a while. She has decayed a fair bit, but she hasn't decayed enough in the fact that she's actually still half alive. And this illustration does get a whole lot creepier because if you think that the illustration ends at the interaction like the if you think the interaction side ends at the lid it doesn't it doesn't end at that so the idea is to now cut her eyes out and make a little template that sits at the back where you can shift through different eyes and I sort of left it, I have left it open to do more designs if I feel, but I only did two designs. As you'll see, I won't get into it now, but we'll, yeah, I'll show you as we get further on in the video. So I'm using Connie's grape color purple. I used the same purple on the um, underside of the lid of the coffin, and I used it in the lining because I I'm using a pencil I'm using my I'm using my Norris coloring in pencils uh, and my soft coloring in pencils to give like a velvety sort of texture and I really haven't been I haven't used my coloring in pencils for a while now so I really wanted to use them on this piece because I wanted to give a lot of texture to everything and I did use the brown on the top of the lid of the coffin as well my brown coloring in pencil to give a bit of texture and I use it all through the coffin to give fabric texture and to give shading and just to do something different because I at the moment I'm kind of experimenting what's going to be working for me with a lot of the illustrations that I do instead of having to run back over with a black sort of like a black watercolor shading I'm sort of wondering if pencils are the way to go to give like a more of a texture but the biggest thing I really want to use the coloring in pencils for this illustration is because I really wanted to give this illustration texture because of the whole concept and the whole idea of this piece like this is a dead woman and there's a lot of texture in her skin and in the lining of the coffin and all that sort of stuff and yeah I really wanted to just I really just wanted to give like a creepy just a creepy textured look to it so I introduced the coloring in pencils which I thought was great I actually really enjoyed incorporating the coloring in pencils so I'm gonna be doing that a lot in the future so I also mixed up some of the eggplant to put up under the eyes and the plum I put on her dress when I first laid it down I thought oh no it's clashing too much with the other purple but when I laid it again it got to a darker purple which is what I really wanted because I really wanted to use all of these beautiful purples inside this illustration inside this coffin and yeah I just I, I needed to like because like I said go to Connie's store I'll have links below to her Etsy store to get these paints her paints are absolutely beautiful and they're beautifully pigmented and they're just colors you don't see in other palettes like I've never seen these colors in palettes so by all means go across and and purchase her watercolors you will not be disappointed so now I'm just adding more shading to around the body and I'm giving some really gross sort of 
sort of just like there's been grossness seeping from her body and yeah there's there's some patches you know, use your imagination like it's gross like it's this is this is some creepy ass gross shit that's going on here so yeah i i used the the knife the cutting knife and i cut out her eyes so i can now complete the illustration so we're nearing the end of the illustration now once i cut her eyes out i will do the template for the eyes and then I then show you how I stuck the template on. And I really wanted to get those eyes a little bit darker. So I went around the edges of the eyes with my Sharpie. And I also used my brush Pigma Micron as well to get into the little corners. So once again I just measure out the way that I wanted to do this particular moving part for the eyes. This like I said I I didn't plan like I didn't plan any of this other than the illustration side of things. I did not know how I was going to be doing a lot of this. I just pretty much went in and done it. I didn't do any experiments and hope to god it worked because like I said this took me 4 days. <laughs> Um, yeah, I I just I, I tend to not want to experiment because I've just I don't know I've, I see that as a pain and gets in the way of me actually doing things and I know that you know I should probably be doing that sort of stuff but no that's that's too much that's semantics people that's semantics just get in and do it <laughs> so I put the template behind the eyes and I get the first mark out of the eyes and then I just slide it down a little bit further and I get the second mark out. So I'm only doing two sets of eyes and then I just do a quick trial run just to make sure that they look all right. And yeah, I, I get in there and I draw the eyes up. So one set of eyes is the top, which is the default eyes, which is basically not eyes at all. It's just the eyelids. And so, so it, you see her basically dead so she looks like she's dead yeah and then the next set is when you pull the tab up and it re reveals her eyes she it's like she opens her eyes and it's honestly creepy as hell so what i did was i matched the color of her eyes to the gemstones in the skull on the top of the coffin so that's it's just all sort of sinking and coinciding with, e with each other. So I put the metallic violet in her eyes. And then I went around with the brush marker and just coloured in the background where the, the eyelids are in the eyes with a black marker. So when it does transition, when you pull the tab up, it's just black. It's just darkness and it gives more of an effect. Plus it makes her eyes even darker again. So... So all I did was I just cut little tabs, I just stuck them on just a little bit wider than the tab and Bob's your uncle, voila, there you go, there's my illustration. My interactive illustration. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.